Hi everyone, it's Christine here from Ever After Paper Crafts and today I'm really excited to share with you this fun mermaid card that I made using some brand new images from um, Honey Bee Stamps. So here's the card that we're going to be working on today. I colored this gorgeous mermaid. I watercolor painted her with my zig markers and a uh, water brush. I've put a lot of glitter on her tail which is slightly showing up there on camera but will definitely show up in the pictures of my blog and I will have a link to my blog in the description description box of this video. So the, the two techniques we're going to be working on today is I'm going to show you quickly how I did this sort of abstract watercolory uh, background to kind of look like a deep ocean scene and then we're going to work on coloring our mermaid as well. So let's go ahead and get started. The stamp set that I'm using today like I said is from Honeybee Stamps. It's brand new and it's called Under the Sea and I love these images so much. Um, this is just a wonderful new series of stamps that Honeybee Stamps came out with and I am in love with them. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I did was I cut out a full size A2 size rectangle out with a die, a stitched rectangle die. Uh, you, this happens to be uh, from Lawn Fawn. It's a stitched rectangle die, but of course you could just use a paper trimmer if you don't have the dies. I'm going to put this on a board. I'm not going to worry about taping it down today uh, because I'm just kind of doing minimal uh, water coloring, so I'm not too worried about warping. Um, I'm also going to be using my 36 palette um, Ganzai Tambi watercolor paints. And I'm going to have these to the side here. And I'm only using two colors today, and I will give you the numbers of those colors here in a moment. So I have a cup of water here, it's off camera, but I have a cup of water and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take uh, my paintbrush and I'm just using a number eight size silver brush, uh, but you can use, you don't need a, a special brush for this technique. If you, any paintbrush that you have at home should do the trick. So I'm wetting my brush here in my cup of water and I'm just going to quickly run water from my brush over onto my watercolor paper. By the way, this was cut out um, with Canson XL watercolor paper, which is my favorite um, for watercolor painting and it's also very affordable. Okay, so now I've got my paper somewhat wet here. I'm going to dip in first into my greenish color from my um, Ganzai Tammy watercolor paints. And this is number 57, if you have this palette. It's an awesome, awesome, awesome green. And it really, coincidentally, I colored the mermaid first and then created this background and I was shocked at how well it, it matched my uh, coloring of the mermaid's tail, which you'll see when I, when I do the coloring here in a moment. But I'm just blotting this paint down onto this rectangle piece of cardstock with my paintbrush. That's why I'm saying any paintbrush that you have at home will do the trick here because um, there's no magic to how I am putting it down. I'm gonna go ahead and dry this now with my uh, heat gun. Just give it a quick drying here. And I'm gonna do this background very quickly because I do want to show you the coloring. And I want to spend a little bit of time today on the coloring because it is a more complex image. And I want to show you that you can still make it look vibrant like it was colored with Copics or alcohol markers by watercolor painting it with your zigs. Um, it's just fantastic how well these markers work. Okay, so that's mostly dry. I'm gonna come in now with my second color, which is number 63 from my Ganze Tambi Paints. And it's just kind of a, a really pretty blue. And I'm just patting it down here um, below, underneath where I have put down the green. And I'm just kind of putting it wherever. There is no magic to this. And I'm literally taking my paintbrush and blotting it down. I'm kind of doing it exaggerated right now so you can just see what I'm doing. Uh, no magic to it whatsoever. I'm gonna come in, get a little bit more paint to darken it up just a little bit. And we're just gonna stick it down wherever we feel like it. And I'm not gonna cover the whole paper. Um, I just kind of want it to look a bit abstract and fun. Just something different, something that is not literal. It's just a little bit different, but you still get the idea that this is an ocean scene. I'm going to quickly um, go over it one more time in both colors, going back in the number 57, just dabbing it down a little bit better, just to darken it up just a little bit more again. And same thing with the number 63 below, but just a little bit more color here. All right, and there you have it, guys. I'm just gonna dry this now. And the last step, which I'm not going to do because I'm not going to be able to get this dry enough to do this on camera, 
but I've done this in plenty of my other videos, and so I will um, incur I'll put a link to one that I have done this in in my description box below. But I'm going to take uh, what I did on the final card here, as I took some silver paint, which is number 95 in this particular palette, and I just flicked it onto this background once it was all dry. And you can see these like silver dots that kind of shimmer and shine when you tilt the card in this in the light. That was just to give it just a little bit of extra oomph. So um, all you would do when this was completely dry is just flick a little bit of that um, silvery paint on here, and then this background would be completely done. All right, so now it's time to move on. Let me get the watercolor paints out of the way, and we're going to move on to coloring our mermaid. Now, I have already stamped her onto Canson XL watercolor paper with some black dye ink from Hero Arts. So let me show you this quickly here. This is the ink that I use for all of my watercoloring. I use it if I'm watercolor painting, if I'm using my zig markers, it's perfect. Um, Hero Arts black dye ink. Um, so I definitely recommend that for you guys. Okay, so I used very few markers to color her. By the way, I did want to show you, look how well, coincidentally, this uh, this tail that I colored here matches the green paint. That was totally by accident, but I thought it was a really happy accident, as I guess Bob Ross would say. <laughs> um, anyhow, I thought that that turned out really cool, so I was really excited that that matched. I didn't even plan it, so um, sometimes fun things happen when you're, when you're crafting. All right, so to go ahead and color this mermaid now, as you can see, it's a much more detailed image than some maybe some of the others you've seen me color on camera. So I wanted to spend just a little bit of time showing you how you can still make her look like she was colored um, with bright, with vibrant, brilliant colors like you might get with alcohol inks, but we're gonna paint her instead. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with her hair. I'm gonna do half her hair and her tail and her shirt and we'll see where we are on time because the other half of the hair you do exactly the same. So I might not do both halves of the hair just so that um, you know, we're not here forever watching me color, but I do want to show you how to do this in real time. All right, so for her hair, I'm using dark brown and brown, and I'm going to come in here and put the dark brown down where I feel that it's going to be the darkest. In other words, where that shadow is going to be hitting her hair. She's kind of sort of tilted like a U, a slight U, just slightly this way. So I'm assuming that the sun is coming down this way. So that means that this side of her is going to be darker. The right, my, if I'm looking at her, my right side of her is going to be darker and the left, my left is going to be lighter, if that makes sense. So um, for the hair, that's not a huge, um, a huge deal because her hair is done in braids. And I'll show you how I really work with braids in just a moment. So I came in with my brown. I'm using dark brown and brown only for her hair. I used the brown to pull the dark brown out um, and blend it. And now I'm using my water brush to blend the color into the remaining white space that's left behind. And now we have this beautiful, lovely, blended um, hair. So now what I was talking about is, as you can see, I'm not really worried about the sun and its position or where the light's gonna be hitting for the braids because when someone's wearing braids, it's always going to be darkest where the braids kind of intersect, the hair strands intersect and make that braided pattern, if that makes sense. So um, hopefully you'll be able to see what I mean as we go through this here. So I'm going to put dark brown now again, which is my darkest color. It's gonna be a little dark up here where this hair is coming into this section. And it's also going to be dark down here where it's going into the middle section of the braid. Hopefully this is making sense. If it's not, please feel free to drop me a comment or send me an email, I'm here to help. Um, now I'm coming in with the brown and just pulling this dark brown out, blending it out just a little bit. And then we're going to take our water brush and fill in the remainder of the dark space here. I'm sorry, the, the white space. I'm gonna do the same thing now with this little tuft of hair here. It's going to be darkest by her face and then down here where it enters the middle section of the braid. So I came in with my dark brown. I'm going to come in now with my brown and pull this out just a bit, blend this out, and now use our water brush to fill in the white space that's left behind. Hopefully this is making sense. But as you can see, you're really getting fun, um, beautiful shadows here, which is what I'm, that's really all I'm looking for. I tell people, you know, don't worry too much about 
light source and shade and, and where the sun's hitting and all of that. If you have shading, it's going to look nice. And, and it doesn't really matter if it's quote unquote correct shading. Um, you know, you just kind of want it to be uh, shaded and pretty. Um, and, and to show the viewer that there are, you know, the lights hitting at, at least somewhere and, uh, you know, that there's some, some depth and darkness to your, um, and light to your projects. Okay. So I'm going to continue to do the same thing here. I'm putting dark brown at the top of the, the, the chunk of hair and at the bottom where it meets and intersects to create the braided pattern. And I'm doing two sections at a time. And hopefully you can see that on the video. So I came in with the dark brown. I'm now coming in with the brown. And same thing on this on this uh, section of hair as well. And now we use our water brush to blend them together and fill in the white space. And we're just going to keep going here. Dark brown on these two sections here. I'm going to go ahead and do three sections now at a time just to speed it up a bit. And now I'm going to come in with the brown, blend the dark brown out just a touch here up and down in those three sections that I've done. And then we'll take our water brush and fill in the white space. So as you can see, the highlight's going to be on kind of the center of the chunk of hair that creates the braid. And that's exactly where we want it. I'm going to do the same thing now, more dark brown. I'm doing three sections at a time now. Um, just to speed this up, so dark brown, now coming in with the brown, coming in with the brown, and coming in with the brown. And then finally taking the water brush and pulling the color up and down here to fill in the white space. Just blending it together is all you're doing with that water brush. And it's what really does all the magic and work for you is the water brush. It is going to, by, the, by virtue of these markers hitting that water, or the ink from the markers rather, hitting that water, it's what's going to create that beautiful shadow. So you really are painting with these and it's really kind of fun. It almost makes me feel like an actual artist, which I've always wanted to be, but never have the talent for. So very fun indeed. So hopefully you get the idea here. We're almost done with this section of our hair. And you could just do this with one brown color if you wanted to. It would still look lovely. I just kind of really like the combination of the brown and the dark brown. I think it just gives a beautiful look. Um, but again, you don't have to. If you just have dark brown or just brown, that's fine. Go for it. It's still going to look lovely because you're going to have the shadows still that are going to be created with the water brush. And it's going to look beautiful. All right. So let me come in now with some dark brown just to finish up here and some brown and some water brush here at the at the bottom here of this braid and now all we have to do is the tuft of hair that hangs out beneath the ribbon so here I'm just going to put some dark brown and to the left to my right is going to be darkest so you have some at the bottom and then along the the right side my right side not hers. <laughs> it gets confusing, doesn't it? When you're talking about, is it her left, my, my left? I'm always talking about mine as the colorer, if that helps. Okay, so there we have the entire my left side of her braid and hair done. And as you can see, hopefully it's picking it up on the camera. You have a very pretty blended look. It's a little hard to even see it on camera. It's kind of a weird... Um, day out. It's very gloomy and rainy here, so I'm not getting the best lighting, but I promise you in person, you definitely see beautiful highlights and shading with this color combination. All right, let's do her tail next. And I only used one color marker for her tail. I used marine green. And so what I'm going to do with her tail is again, my right side um, of this picture, my right is going to be darkest because I have the, the light source coming in this way. So I'm just going to take this green, marine green marker here and just scribble down some color on the right side here. And I'm literally, as you can see, just scribbling down a line of color. Nothing pretty or fancy at all. Literally just scribbling that down. Now, I'm just gonna turn it because it helps me keep my head out of the, the camera angle here. And I'm going to take my water brush and in a circular motion, I'm gonna go uh, and pull this color um, into the white space that remains. And um, I'm doing a circular motion because it helps keep the line, that line, it helps soften that line that we just put down of color. So the line will basically disappear and all that you'll be left with is pretty shading. 
So it'll be a gradual shift from the darker color to the lighter color that's being created from the water brush and the dark line of color will disappear. And I just love that feature. And so there you have it. There's her beautiful tail. And now let's do her shirt quickly. And for her shirt, I just used one color. I used pink and I just scribbled down some marker here just around her arms where I feel there's going to certainly be some shading and then up here by her sleeve and then underneath her hands here. Okay, so now we'll take our water brush and pull that color into the white space. And again, the water brush really does all the work for you. It's awesome. And then we'll come down here, fill the sleeve in, and then of course, underneath her arms as well. Now let me go back in. I just missed a few spots here. Um, so I'm just kind of going back in and getting color all the way out to the line. Sometimes I don't get it all the way out to the line on my videos because I don't have the best vantage point for, for, for watching myself color because uh, I don't want to get my head in the camera. So I'm just kind of trying to go back and fix that quickly. And now I just quickly want to show you how I did her skin. And I'm just going to do her face um, so that this video isn't, you know, forever long. I'm going to use blush and flesh color for her face. So I'm going to take the blush and again, we want um, the shading to focus mostly on the, the right, my right side of her face. So I have the blush down first. Now I'm going to take the flesh color and in a circular motion kind of blend that out and then take my water brush to fill in the white space. And you have there, you can see, you might not be able to see honestly on the video, but Oh, you can see, yeah, you can see. You have beautiful uh, shading there. And then what I like to do is take almond pink, once I've shaded the face, and just put a little bit in a circular motion of the almond pink where there would be cheeks, kind of for just a little bit of blush on her cheeks. And then I just take my water brush and just kind of go over it a little bit, and that sort of blends it into the skin tone a little bit. That's just a little tip there for the blush that I kind of learned just by trial and error. And that's about it, guys. What I would probably do to finish this up is I'd go over the tail again just to iron out this little line that the water brush created. I just repeat exactly what I did and it will get that line to completely go away. And then we finish obviously the other side of her hair and her little fins and then color in the rest of her skin. But that's how you do it, guys. That's how you take a complex um, image that has a lot more detail in it and that's how you color it with, with watercolor painting and your Zig markers. And at the end of the day, it looks bright vibrant and it has that brilliancy of bright color and uh, it looks like you colored it with Copics or something but you didn't and uh, you only used one two three four five six seven markers total to color all of this isn't that awesome so anyway I hope that you enjoyed this video and these beautiful stamps from honeybee stamps the last thing that I did to put this card together of course is I, I uh, added a sentiment that happens to be from another uh, stamp from the release this sentiment is from mermaid song stamp set and so this this sense this stamp set has a lot of sentiments as you can see it's a huge stamp set and it also has another mermaid down here and so I chose sending a sea full of love for my sentiment I took some silver metallic thread and just kind of wove it behind the sentiment there and then I added some what look like bubbles they're from studio Katia and they are called clear round confetti drops and so I just added those um, to the outside to kind of look like bubbles and that's it guys that created my entire card so I hope that you enjoy this video and that you'll give some of this coloring and uh abstract fun um watercoloring background to try thank you so much as always for watching um have a wonderful day and i'll catch you in the next video bye bye